here's the <laughs> here's the whiskey. You tried to end the episode just now. We just did like eight seconds ago. <sighs> eight seconds ago, we just wrapped it up. Welcome to Whiskey Ball. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. So, what do we got? Kentucky Best. Daniel, this what's is... rule number one? <laughs> the best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. Yes. Now, but, unless it's Kentucky Best, then, then obviously. It's obviously it's the only one. <laughs> now, here's my favorite. Yes. This got sent to us by Ron Willard, okay. a magnificent bastard. Ron Willard, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> But it's my favorite note that I've gotten. Yes. Because it's so Eeyore. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, I mean, just imagine Eeyore, right? Good morning, for Winnie the Pooh. Good morning, Eeyore. Eeyore, what's good about good's it? What's good about it? Or good morning, if it is one, yeah. which I doubt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so listen to this. I found this at my local Trader Joe's in Boston. Hmm? It is a TJ's brand, by the way. He said it's not really a TJ brand. It is. It was bottled for Trader Joe's by Luxro. By Luxro. We think. Okay. Yeah. And he said, he said it's made by Luxro, but not sure, blah, blah, blah. Review it if you want. <laughs> if you want. Review it if you want. <laughs> in Boston, it retails for $12.99, tax included. Tax included. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it made me really love Ron. Yeah, thank you for sending the box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Review it if, if you, you want. want. <laughs> All right. So, oh, so this is Luxro. They made Rebel Yell. Oh, yeah. and, and we're going to compare Rebel Yell because I, there has been supposition on the internet which knows all things <laughs> that it might just be Rebel Yell, like a special bottling of Rebel Yell. Great. Right. Now, <laughs> no, I, I know I know that was in jest and I was talking mm -hmm. to you. But here's the thing, the internet, yes, does, unfortunately, the part that knows the real the thing, research. the real things, it's like this little, little tiny microscopic thing, and then the giant volume is all towards yeah. ignorance and hashtags. Yeah, yeah, but there's a small group of people who are very good at research. <laughs> And who are like, here's the truth. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, oh crap, I bet they didn't want that to be. How there. do we give that more, all right. Yeah, let's, anyway. not, let's not fix the end so, in this whiskey review. In theory, this is Rebel, well, not in theory. Some have said this might be Rebel Yell. Okay. Now, I, Luxro just opened a new distillery in mm -hmm. Bardstown, Kentucky. I'm gonna get Rebel Yell. Uh, in Bardstown, Kentucky, uh, like 2018? So yeah. they're, they're not even have two-year-old whiskey yet, sure, sure, sure. or may have two. Yeah. I can't remember the date that was in the opening. Anyway, they're building in. But these guys, the reason I am uh, open to being impressed by Luxro yes. is because they also do Blood Oath. Oh. So their whole production for whiskey has been sourcing and blending things up until recently. It's been a very long time since I've had Blood Oath. But I've had, well, there's all, all the Blood Oaths are different. Okay. There's Pact 1, Pact 2, Pact 3, and those I've found some that I'm like, eh, not my thing, and some that I think, holy crap. Yeah. This is astounding, okay. right? Yeah. And so uh, anybody who's the taste behind Blood Oath, mm -hmm. it, it's possible they could they could create something really amazing. Yes. It's also possible that they just went for a four-year-old Kentucky bourbon yes. for Trader Joe's, yes. and they just did like a Trader Joe's version of Rebel Yell, yes. which is okay, and yes. we didn't hate it, Yes. but who knows? Okay. I wish Trader Joe's could sell whiskey in our t state. Yeah, no, really. So let's fix the internet in a whiskey review and then change all of the broken laws in that same whiskey all review. All at once. <laughs> you know, if you could pull that off, Kentucky Best, you are the best. You are the best, yeah. <laughs> if you could fix Texas blue laws <laughs> for <laughs> us that are literally a hundred Then years I will drink Kentucky Best years obsolete. every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Just one sip every day. So, got the classic nose, a little bright, some vanilla in there. It's Ooh, very shiny. Shiny, yeah. And then um, it's like, uh, what is that, an apple or a honey? I think it's a, can a caramel apple. Caramel, ah. Uh, like from the fair. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But with a little bit of a grassy note surrounding it. Yeah, and then I am getting that ethanol ding. And then it's kind of sweet, a little tannic. Then it's just a Thinner. really good, like, look, for 13 bucks. Oh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Come wait. on. I was about to say, it's thin on the sweetness, he said, but 13 bucks. Dude, there's you, no funky what aftertaste. What are you doing for 13 bucks? There, I mean, come on, this, this might be the best budget whiskey I've ever tried. Is this at the $13 range? Is this, is this uh, 40%? 
80 proof? Probably, yeah. Yeah. At $13, you kind of have to be. Um, yeah. I, so, in that spectrum, I think the most recent whiskey we had was something, it was something gentleman, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Kentucky Gentleman. Kentucky Gentleman, and that yeah. was about $10. I think, uh, we'll try Rebel Yell, and then the Kentucky Gentleman, which was also a really nice budget option, that would be an interesting head-to-head. -head. It's a uh, more caramel best. sweetness and the the best. Well, it's a on. darker sweet note. It's very, well, it's very similar. It's very similar, but it's a darker sweet note in the Kentucky Best. Wow, very similar. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a candy vanilla. Oh, and the palate's not even near as good. The Rebel Yell is a candy vanilla. Yeah, and the Rebel Yell is a flat, sweet palate. Whereas the Kentucky Best has actual texture and taste in the palate. Yeah, there's more wood tannins, more woody notes in the Kentucky Best. But man, they're yeah, in the same no, no, family. No, I'm saying this is 80% very similar. The last 20%, yeah. we're talking about still similar flavors, but the levels of intensity between those flavors is quite a bit different. You get a yeah. bit more vibrance out of the Kentucky Best. It's that last 20% that makes me think, holy crap, That's, I got my money's worth here. out of that. I want to read a question while you pull out Kentucky Gentleman. You really think, want to do Gentleman, huh? That's a, just a really interesting, because that was a nice I don't remember where I stacked your that buck one. whiskey. All right, read your question. Okay, we have how to improve taste abilities. I know that I can't find a special note if I haven't tried it before. Yeah, you need the reference point. Uh, where I am from, Chihuahua, Mexico, whiskey is not that popular and have a lot of trouble to find bourbons like uh, JB, Wild Turkey, Woodford, Bullet, Fireball are ones that I have seen. Last night I tried for the first time Wild Turkey 101, mm. which is often very highly rated. Uh, and I couldn't find any difference with JP, with JB, more than uh, turkey is smoother. Yeah. Uh, I, I found the same aromas, citric, leather, and that's it. So what should I do? Okay, so I'm gonna answer that question, but first, I'm in Virginia. Virginia gentlemen. Yeah, this is what happens when, Okay, anyway. so Virginia gentlemen versus Kentucky Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Oh, there's a much more apple candied Caramel note on the... Is this the Virginia Gentleman? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting more, but I actually am getting more character, more presence in the nose of the Virginia Gentleman. No, go back. Go back. Because it's much darker and more molasses-y. I don't know. It's pretty comparable for me. I mean, the different notes, still very much... Oh! Proven. Oh, yeah. That's... Comparatively, it's way more medicinal. What is? The Virginia. The Virginia? Yeah, it's way more what? vanilla here's medicinal. The, here's the thing. The ten dollars. Yeah, but this is only thirteen. For, for an extra three. Yeah. I'm trying to decide. Came on. If it's an extra three, if there's that much of no. Uh, you know why it's worth an extra three? That muff of a difference. Oh lord. You know why it's extra three? Because it's it looks fancier. So when your friends come it over, does, and you can be like, let me pour you a bourbon. And it's got a cork. And you don't have to. That's three dollars yeah. worth of cork. And you don't have to uh, feel like you're shortchanging them. Okay, so right, when it comes to... Uh, between the two, I would agree. It's the Kentucky yeah. Bust, yeah. When it comes to flavor profiles, yes, it's absolutely true that you cannot recall what you haven't built as a pattern. So if you've never had cinnamon, you can't say this tastes like cinnamon because your brain has no grid for cinnamon. Right. So when it comes to whiskey notes, all you can do is ask, what does this remind me of? So what I would say is... Stop trying to find the whiskey notes that other people are describing. Yeah. And start asking your brain, with my food background, my history, and my preferences, what am I tasting, whether or not it has anything to do with whiskey? And then uh, start practicing A-B comparisons of get two bottles and try to write down what's different between these two bottles. So, Not what you find, but what's different between these two speaking bottles. Speaking of AB, because that's one of the best ways to start to pick out things whenever you can have a direct comparison. Mm -hmm. The AB between Kentucky Best and Virginia Gentleman is not flattering towards the gentleman. It is not. Acclimating to the Kentucky Best, mm -hmm. those notes, they set you up in the palate for stuff that is kind of off in the Virginia Gentleman. Whenever we first reviewed this, not coming off at Kentucky Best, mm -hmm. was that like, oh. was not there. Right. That was not there. Now I'm getting almost, almost 
A sour note. Sour, and then it's getting towards, remember that diaper genie note? Yeah, I know. The diaper genie note we got yeah. in the Whiskey Tribe episode. The fake perfume. Yeah. We, trying to cover up the smell of something else. We salted, and I think it was an old overhaul. It was rye. an old overhaul, right. Put some salt, salt in there, and it turned into diaper Jesus. genie. And there's a really faint diaper genie yeah. note in there. So, a Belfry. 300,000 subscribers, congrats you guys. Thank you. Yes. Yes, that's awesome. And I think it's super cool to get that congratulations from Belfry who yeah, has- He's been around forever. Absolutely been, been here been forever. forever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, been both gracious and ball busting at different times. <laughs> yes, that's awesome you guys, we appreciate yeah. that. We obviously, none of this would even be a thing if it weren't for you, so it means the world to us that you yeah. show up and Watch us review whiskeys even when you can't necessarily get your hands on a lot of them. Right. Yeah, we thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, wobble Sneak. Help! Cork fell into a bottle. So I was oh. gifted a bottle of Glenfiddich 18 by my uncle, but the cork had dried out and crumbled when I went to open it. I strained the big chunks out, but there is still a decent amount of small sediment left over in the bottom of the bottle that I can't seem to get out for the life of me. Will that sediment ruin the flavor of it over time? I also, I have a bottle sealed with an old wine cork. Mm -hmm. The bottle sealed with an old wine cork, which seems to be making an okay seal. Good. Um, will the bottle go bad with this in this condition? Would a coffee filter work for straining out the sediment or would it ruin the flavor? So, like, I don't, I think it's gonna be a thing. minimal impact on what the flavor. What if we did something where we, we explored pouring the same whiskey through like four different filters. Well, and so, see which one changed the flavor the most. So I will tell you right now, we already did the Brita filter. We did the Brita filter, it's, but I it's mean basically like, charcoal filtering. But I mean, where your goal is the opposite. Right. To filter something without changing the flavor. Okay. So, so which just filter? Straight out. Yeah, like if something goes wrong with your whiskey. I mean, I think you just need a super incredibly tight colander. To I was out. well, I was also thinking. Um, uh, Basically, like a screen door screen. Yeah, I mean, right. Where his job really, is to keep bugs yeah, out. Really right, tight. Yeah. Something that fine. Now, also speaker mesh. You can actually go buy the mesh material for speaker covers. Okay. And that is extremely fine. Um, and then coffee filters even more so. Uh, I think your problem with a coffee filter is not the filter, as much as it is how long your whiskey spins sitting in open air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evaporating while it's waiting to soak through the filter, right? So you, what you want is the whiskey to have the least amount of like chance to evaporate into the environment, right? While also filtering out all the. Shit. So it can't be like a twenty-four hour filter where it right. just does the drip. Or even just a generic drip. coffee filter can take like five, ten minutes. That's right. enough, as with all the agitation, to like change the whole flavor. So I'd say metal filter, smallest possible. Yeah. Uh, openings, but. Fair enough. I think that give it a shot. I, I do it all the time, by the way. I wanted to say you haven't hit. There's no nothing wrong. I've hit this multiple times. Right. Where a cork broke into a whiskey bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but so what I always do is I dump the whole whiskey bottle out mm -hmm. through a filter. Okay. Rinse the bottle, dump it out, pour it back in, reseal it with a different cork. Here's the advice: steal your drinking. If you find me a viper, a friend. If you steal me, you steal your <laughs> your lover's heart. Your liver's your, heart? Your liver's heart. I mean, your liver does, it needs some TLC every once in a while whenever you watch this show. And if and you drink, may you drink, drink with us. us.